Steven Spielberg, no less, said of my next guest, if he picks the right roles and doesn't forget the theatre, he can eventually be Alec Guinness or Laurence Olivier. Spielberg should know, he set him on the road to international stardom by casting him as a murderous Nazi camp commandant in Schindler's List. Since then, with films like The English Patient and Onyegin, he's established a reputation as an actor as much admired by the critics as by the fans. His latest film is a version of Graham Greene's The End of the Affair. Ladies and gentlemen, Rafe Fiennes. <laughs> I have a question to start with, but first of all, why an actor? Why do you want to be an actor? Well, I, th I thought I wanted to be a painter first. Uh -huh. And when I was at school doing O levels, I only was mainly in the art room drawing and painting. I did perform in school plays and was told I was quite good, but everyone, when you're at school and you say you want to be an actor, everyone is saying, don't be an actor, don't be an actor, you'll never work. <laughs> and um, there were a few actors at school, and they were quite theatrical and a bit actorish. <laughs> like like kind of, no, I sort of thought, I'm not sure I want to be an actor if I <laughs> have to be like that. Um, anyway, I went to, I did a foundation um, art course at Chelsea. And I think the atmosphere of that course, which was really was designed to take anyone who thought that they had any talent as a any kind of artist, was to take them by the scruff of the neck and to say, look, if you think that drawing a little glass with a sharpened HB pencil is make your good, take this one-inch paintbrush, dip it in black paint, and now draw your glass of water. And they had, you, know, you were kind of roughened up in your, yes. your visual sensibility. And, and I think the atmosphere of that made me think, um, well, I can do lots of things, you know. They're, they're, they're provoking me to think more broadly about painting and I, and I thought actually, at first I thought I want to do theatre design and then I thought no actually I want to I want to be an actor and it just came like a very clear thing. But I mean what, what about the, the, the process of acting? I mean in, you, you've been said, it's been said of you that you, you portray lost souls. One, uh, one critic said that, that you portray them so well that, that he began to wonder if you were in fact a lost soul yourself. But that's probably too deep a question to ask a president. <laughs> but I mean, let's take let's take Bendrix, the guy that you yeah. that you you play in this at the end of the affair, uh, the adaptation of the Graham Greene novel. I mean, how do you go about? Well, what's the key to it? What, uh, is there is there a trick? Is is it a moustache? Is it a man? Is it a limp? Is it a, a pair of shoes? I mean, what, what gives you the part? I think, for me, more and more, the process of finding the clothes of a character is very helpful. I get, I really want to have a very close relationship with the costume designer, of course, of course with the director, that goes without saying. But I think if it's the, the, the cloth of a jacket or the colour of a tie or how crumpled a shirt would be, and you have these great sessions with costume designers where you go for maybe two or three hours and they will have selected suggestions and you can try stuff on and you look at it in a mirror and feel it and say, well, this jacket would be great if it was cut a bit differently. And, and I suppose that is the most practical way I can describe of, of a way mm. in. Other things are, well, obvious things like looking at dialogue, looking at the text and just saying, why does that man say that? What, what, what's the thought process mm. behind that line? What does it say about have the person? Have, to, to interrupt, have you ever mm. tried um, a, a big ginger beard? Because <laughs> <laughs> it, it's worked for grip. Like, well, <laughs> Pass that on, Ray. It's just a little. <laughs> well, right, right, so I, I, I shall try that next. No, it, right. it, it, it's done wonders for him. Right. <laughs> Made him very funny. <laughs> because in, in, in Schindler's List, of course, the, the uniform was was part of that, wasn't it? Is what you're saying? I mean, there, there was. Put, yeah, putting on that SS uniform was really quite peculiar because I did. I, I tried it on here in London, and we. I flew out to Krakow in Poland, and. I think I was called for the first day of shooting. I don't even think in the end I was used. I remember I, remember I stepped out of the... Because this was a city which hasn't been damaged by the Germans, unlike Warsaw, it, the buildings standing very much as they were. And there are still people there who remember... You know, the buildings remember it. And I stepped out of the caravan in this 
what is, has to be said, is a very, very handsome uniform. The Germans, the Nazis got in theatre designers to design the cut of these clothes. Did they? Yeah. yeah. And it feels, it's odd to say it, but it felt good. It felt powerful. And then I felt embarrassed that I felt good. Yes. And then we were in a piazza in the, what was the old Jewish quarter, and Ben Kingsley, who was in it with me, and he was playing a Jewish prisoner, and he had a Jewish armband with the star. And um, there was a cafe there, and this very nice lady came out, and she said, Oh, you're from the film, and welcome, welcome, please come into this old Jewish cafe. And I said, um, I'm sorry, I, ca I can't, I can't go into, I can't go in wearing this into a... The Jewish cafe, and she said, oh, well, never, I understand, never mind, fine. And then the irony is that about three weeks later, we were shooting in this square, and the, the production company had hired the cafe for actors.